don't stare at him right now. Good afternoon, thanks. Matt. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, welcome to Hilly Place, where you can hear and be healed. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God for his goodness. I mean, I miss uh, it. a lot of people don't realize that the main part of getting healed is um, listening to his word, hearing his word, what, he, right. what he's saying, because when you look at his word, actually the word became flesh. That's right. Jesus, when you really look at what Jesus is saying in his word, it, it just seems to heal you all up. I'm a witness to that. And certainly make you feel better. We have uh, many testimonies how God has healed people. As well. Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your loving kindness, your grace. We're so thankful for you. We want to just praise your name and, and thank you for everything. And we ask that you will forgive us for our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you will open our heart, open our ears, so that we can hear and understand what you're saying to us tonight. And I ask that you will lead me by your Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Because, uh, you know, it's so important to uh, get the word in you. It sure is. And this is the longer I stay with this, the more I see that you need the word above everything else. You know, a lot of people, you know, uh, when it comes to healing, they want to just be healed. So just, healed. just zap me. Heal me. Mm -hmm. No, that ain't the way it works. No. You, you got to have faith to be healed. Faith, faith, faith. And if you don't have no faith to be healed, uh, that's going to happen because all through the, the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus always was telling us according to your faith. Amen. 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 Now, we've been looking at this series, Is Anyone Among You Sick? Mm -hmm. we, we really... Um, this is really um, grew into something here. <laughs> I didn't. I thought I'd be on it uh, two or three sessions, but you know, you have to stay on it until uh, you get all of it out of here. Yeah, it's deep. Some of it's so Matt. deep it's all the way to the Old Testament. Yeah, and, uh, it, it, it does include the Old Testament. It does. So you um, can't ignore that. We're been looking at James, the fifth chapter, mm -hmm. verses uh, thirteen. 20, we are working our way on down through there. Uh, in the 13th verse, it says, Is anyone among you suffering? He must pray. Is anyone joyful? He is to sing praises to God. Now, King James says, Is anyone among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is, is any married? Let him sing songs. Now, I'm just uh, looking at that and I saw that, you know, uh, affliction a lot of times comes from uh, our own disobedience. Amen. 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 We gave you an example last week about uh, Manasseh, what all he did. Now, this week uh, in Jonah, this prophet, God told him to go to Nineveh. That's right, so he did tell and he didn't want to go. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. And so God prepared a fish for him, and he was in that fish three days and three nights. That's right. Now, when he was in that fish, uh, big, great fish that God had prepared for him. Now, when, when you say that, that God prepared a fish for a man, and this man lived in this fish, that sounds like a fairy tale to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, you believe all that stuff? Yes, I do. I believe every word out of the word of God. And I, I'm just not looking at this translation. I use the King James and the Amplified, but I look at other translations, and I look at different commentaries and all of that, because when you're going to teach something, you have to really know what you're talking about. Amen. To your best Amen. Through the words. Amen. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, people will stand behind this pulpit and they'll just chat like they're chatting with somebody on the street. 
But when you're standing behind this pulpit, you are a representative of God. Right, right. And you're supposed to be proclaiming his word. Now in Jonah, the second chapter, the second verse, it reads, and, and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I. And thou hearest my voice. Now verse 7 of that same chapter says, When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. And that's how he got out of that um, fish belly. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he started praying. Right. Amen. Amen. And the Amen. Lord brought him right out of there. Yeah. Psalm 95, 2 says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him you know, with praise, with songs. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you're joy, merry, and happy, you should be saying praises unto the Lord. Because it's the reason why you have joy, because he has given it to you. Joy. Amen. Only reason we alive. He's supposed to be praising. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, verse uh, 14 out of this fifth chapter, it says, Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Amen. And we looked at sick as anybody who is weak, people, to be without strength, powerless, needy, poor. You know, you just can't do nothing for yourself. That's Amen. Embarrassing. You, you're in that hospital bed and, you know, uh, it's nothing that you can do for yourself. You know, a lot of times when you're in the hospital, you're not even in your right mind. Usually when you're in that kind of condition, you're in intensive care. Intensive care. Because you can be in the hospital bed and still up and about. <laughs> and we talked about the elders were um, supposed to be among the Christians, those who preside over the assemblies of the churches. Amen. Now, uh, the New, oh, New Testament uses the term bishop and elders. Not only Christians, they're supposed to be holy people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Set aside for God's use and And we uh, said, uh, we're supposed to pray over it. Okay. Now, in um, Acts, the ninth chapter, we looked at this in another one of our healing classes. This is when Tabitha got sick and died. Amen? Amen. And uh, they called for Peter. And Peter came, and here's what it says in Acts 9, 40. It says, but Peter put them forth. That means that he put them all out. Yeah, they because they were weeping and crying and all that. And that's what uh, Jesus did a few times too when uh, he went to, uh, was it Jay Harper's house? Yeah. He had to put them out too. Because they'd be distracted. Amen. Distracted. And it says, and he kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. That's right. So Peter prayed, and this woman actually her was revived. Right. Death, because she, they had divorced her and put her in upper room. So she had died. Mm -hmm. So prayer is powerful. And it says, uh, anoint them with oil. Right. Anoint them with oil. Now we saw that in Mark, the sixth chapter, the 13th verse. And it's when he sent out uh, his disciples. And in the 13th verse, he said, And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many who were sick and healed them. We have oil right here, you know, for that very purpose. What chapter is that? That's uh, Mark, the sixth chapter. Uh, the 13th verse, it says that. We have oil in, over here, so if, you know, some, um, 
not necessarily, like a lot of times people come over here and we know that they can pray for themselves, but they're weak. Amen? Mm -hmm. They're poor, they're needy, they're part of this. A lot of them don't even know the Lord. Amen? Right. So we have that oil that we can anoint them and pray over them that the Lord will heal them. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, the James 5.15 reads on, it says, and the prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven. Praise God. Praise God. The prayer of faith. We looked at that last week, uh, Mark eleven twenty four. It says, uh, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe, that you receive them and you shall have them. So that word receive means take them. Take it. Amen? Amen. So if you believe that you have received it, it's yours. Amen? Amen. By faith. Amen? Now go with me to uh, Matthew, the ninth chapter. I'm going to look at something here tonight. There's so many. Uh, Examples in the Word of God. Uh, Matthew, the ninth chapter. The first verse. It says, And Jesus, getting into a boat, crossed over the Sea of Galilee and came to Capernaum, his own city. They brought to him a man who was paralyzed, lying on a stretcher, seeing their active faith springing from confidence in him, Jesus said unto the paralytic, Do not be afraid. Praise God. Son, your sins are forgiven. The penalty is paid, the guilt removed, and you are declared to be in right standing with God. That's the first thing that Jesus said to this man who was paralyzed. See, a lot of people, when they are sick, and you go visit them in the hospital and you pray for them, they don't know that their sins are forgiven. Some of them feel they deserve it. Right. Some of them. Uh, some of their family members have told them, you, you should get something all that you can eat. You made your bed hard, now you got to lay in it. Yeah. That, that is not our God. Our God is good. When Jesus saw this paralytic man, he told him that your sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen? And then it reads on. And some of the scribes said to themselves, this man blasphemed by claiming the right and the pre idolates of God. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think evil in your hearts? See, this is what people do. They always want to think the worst of somebody when they get sick. Well, they must have done something, you know. But you know, be honest. When you go to the doctor and you got a sickness, they always ask you what you've been doing, what you've been eating, what you've been, you know. Yeah, they, they want to see. Want to they want to uh, ask well, you questions you like that. Have you been taking drugs? Or are you are you an alcoholic? And blah 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 blah. Ooh. Right. But it says here uh, in the fifth verse, it says, which is easier to say your sins are forgiven and the penalty paid or to say get up and walk? Both are possible with God. Both are possible for man. But it's impossible. Both, impo both are impossible. Why does man continue to do that? Which They're possible for God, but right. impossible for man. Right. man can't do but so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority and power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. And he got up and went home, healed and forgiven. Amen. Healed and forgiven. Healed and this forgiven. is what James is talking about here in this fifth chapter. If you have committed any sins, that you will be forgiven. Amen. Amen. And uh, he'll do. Right. So 
We can get healed. You can get forgiven of your sins. And see, we don't preach this enough about uh, when you are uh, received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm. When you uh, you believe right. the gospel and you receive it, that means you take that gospel. You step out. You're not waiting on God, God to do something miraculous or some right. other thing in your life to happen before you uh, receive Christ. But you hear something. Right. And you believe it. You hear his word and you believe it and then you right. receive it and then you become born again. Mm -hmm. At that point in your life, you can also be healed. Amen. Amen. That's what the scripture we just read. You will be forgiven of your sins and healed. Amen. Amen. Now James uh, 5, 16, it says, Therefore confess your sins to one another your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. That's right. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Amen? Tremendous power. Tremendous power. Uh, in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, it says in 1918, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Now what was going on in the 19th chapter of Acts? What was going on? Paul was in Ephesus. And he was, you know, he had uh, this 19th chapter. It's, it's really a fantastic chapter in the Word of God. If you have time to read it, you need to read it because it gives you a lot of uh, information about uh, what was going on down there in Ephesus. Amen? Amen. And what he said uh, in the first verse, it said, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Certain disciples. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. You know, a lot of people are right there today. Right, they are. They go into church and somewhere and say, I feel the spirit in here. And I be saying that, don't you? Well, that's what the they'll say. And that's why you, you know all the that they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Right. Because they say, I, the, I, the Holy Spirit's in here today. The right. Holy Spirit should be in you. All the time. Amen. And what was going on here, once he got through all of that, and, you know, and uh, got these people saved and on the right track, uh, he did a lot of things, um, but here at this uh, 18th verse, before that happened, there were some people, it says, in the 10th verse it says, this continued for two years, so that all the inhabitants of the, of the west coast province of Asia Minor, Jews as well as Greeks, heard the word of God the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ. Right. So he stayed there for a while. Yeah, he had to. Amen. Teaching the word of God. They Teaching didn't know about the Holy Spirit. Amen. They didn't know nothing about the If they didn't know about the Holy Spirit, that means that he had to start from the baptism of John and go, you know, all, all up from there. They didn't know and about a lot of people, that's the way you have to start with them. From the baptism of John, John was, uh, the Baptist was baptizing people unto repentance, getting them ready for the kingdom of God. Amen. But they didn't know when you get baptized and you receive Christ by faith, he had given you the spirit of God. That's they what happens. Know that. And they don't they know the gifts or, or Because or Jesus that. is the one that baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. And anyway, when Paul was down there, these uh, people 
were, they had saw what Paul was doing, they'd been watching him for a few years, and they decided that they weren't going to try to cast out devils. Right. <laughs> they sure did. Amen. <laughs> and they ended up getting uh, beat up, naked, ran out of the house naked. Amen. They were beat up bad. They had to get bandaged up after that. Yes, it tore some of the it skin off of it. It said stripped them. Stripped them. And wounded it. And wounded it. So it them. And it stores. And it says in the 17th verse, this became known to all who lived in Ephesus, both Jew and Greek, and fear fell upon them all. Mm -hmm. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified and exalted. Mm -hmm. Many of those who had become believers were coming, confessing, and disclosing their formal sinful practices. Yes, and many of those who had practiced uh, magical arts collected their books and thorn book after book, book, after book into exactly. the pile began burning them in front of everybody. They calculated their value to be found uh, 50,000 pieces of silver. And then it says, So the word of the Lord concerning eternal salvation through faith in Christ was growing greatly and prevailing. So, if you're messing with any of them, things like that, magical arts, voodoo books, you know, voodoo books or you know, John, number of books John, or whatever books. books you got. Them books for uh, reading. Reading. You need to get rid of them. Yeah, them reader books to read people. Huh? You know, because this stuff is real. Right. And they had books on how to perform all this they stuff. Had, they they were on, using these they this stuff. In emphasis, on they were right. actually using this witchcraft and yeah, all this stuff. Right. And this is what they repented from. Amen. They said, no, Jesus is greater than all of this. And they were drawing demons in their cell. Amen. That's what jumped on one of them. That and just whooped him up. Just whooped the skin off of him, I guess. Now, we're supposed to pray for one another. That's right. It says, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Yeah. That's Colossians 1, 9. Kind of reads a little different out of the Amplified. Because what the Amplified does is amplifies. Right, it makes everything a lot clearer. It says here in uh, the Amplified, for this reason, since the day we heard about it, we have not stopped praying for you, asking specifically that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom with insight into his purposes and an understanding of spiritual things. That's what we are praying for the church to come into uh, this knowledge. Amen? Amen? And start understanding spiritual things. Because a lot of them, um, you know, they know this verse in uh, Acts 10, 38 says how Jesus, how God anointed Jesus and Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. A lot of people don't know that the devil's got his hand in sickness. He does. Sickness comes from the devil. He does. And you're supposed to be fighting it with everything that you got. Amen? Amen. Prayer, uh, anointing oil, uh, doctors, nurses, the medical profession, whatever help that you can get. Because a lot of people say, well, I'm not worried about dying. But here's what happens. When you really come close to death, your body starts fighting to stay alive. The, the thing of it is, it's not so much as that. See, we all were born here for a purpose to serve God. So when sickness or anything come on us, 
And we been, we know we've been in the vineyard working for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this isn't supposed to be none of us to be sick. And so we know uh, this Satan is trying to attack us. And so we go to God in prayer and say, is this something that I'm doing that's not right? And he's saying, no, I want you to work strong heartily in what you're doing. And he'd give us guidance, then you need a little rest. He said, no, you need, well, you need to uh, make, you, he tell us what to do. Go to the doctor, you need this medicine. Well, see, uh, he tell you everything. Uh, a lot of, I have heard people say. Because he don't want us sick. I know he don't want us sick. But I have heard people say that God is putting this on me to show you something. He don't never put nothing like that on you because he wants you to be 100% for him. And that God is going to get the glory out of my sickness. No. No, because those are all tradition. That's all tradition. Just like um, everything that happens is the will of God. That's another tradition. He don't will none of his children to be sick. God only wants you to have good. Right. It's not his will for you to be sick. It's his will for you to be healed. And see, you need to know this for yourself that when you're healed, that is good. Yeah, yeah. When you are sick, that is bad. Right. It's the same way with uh, when you are poor, that is bad. Right. What's when you are that? rich, that is good. Right. Same way when you're not saved, when you're an unbeliever, that's bad. Yeah, because you're going straight to hell. It's no life. When you hell. are a believer, that's good. Yeah, that's life. And especially if you don't have the Holy Spirit, that is bad. So if, it's something, if you have the Holy Spirit inside you, that is good. Right. Amen? Because he can guide and lead you into all truth. Right. You don't have to wait for the Holy Spirit to come into a building. He is in you. And you know, uh, yeah. Pastor, that's the, all the same as if somebody have a broken tooth and is down low on the gun. They know they should go see a dentist because if they don't, it's going to get worse and worse. And then they're going to get sick and say, this is because of the Lord. No, it's because you, you're not taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Go get the tooth pulled or, or fixed or whatever you're going to do, but you can't just leave yourself. No, like, go ahead just spend uh they call it what pride, my, mm -hmm. pride, gay pride, or something. I don't know what. It is. Whatever it is, that's when you know they celebrate all these different things that are going on in our country that are illegal. Mm -hmm. Amen. And even at uh, different places where I worked at, me and my wife, right, you can't yeah, say uh, nothing you get rolled up. to them about it, or you will get. Can't say nothing about a man yeah. wearing a dress and stuff. It's right, like if a man sports. wears a dress or a woman, you know, Dressing looks like, like a man or whatever, you know, that's fine. And if they, you know, openly declare that they're gay or lesbian, that, that's fine. Right. Amen. Which leads me to Genesis 18 chapter. All right. Let's see what the Word of God says about this. Because, uh, in order for you to be healed, well, let me read you this verse again. It says, uh, I'm going to just read out of King James, where we're at here. In this uh, James 5.16, it says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, right. that you may be healed. Right. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to look at in a, uh, a prayer here uh, in the 18th chapter of uh, Genesis. And we're going to look at why he was praying. And um, in this 18th chapter, the 17th verse, it says, uh, The Lord said, Should I keep secret from Abraham, my friend and my servant, what I am going to do. Should I just keep it a secret? What the Lord is going to do? And we see here 
in the 18th verse, it says, Since Abraham is destined. destined to become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him, for I have known, chosen, and knowledge him as my own, so that he may teach and command his children and his sons, and the sons of the his household. of his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is righteous and just. That's right. So that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has promised him. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, The outcry of the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is indeed great, and their sin is exceedingly great. That's right. I will go down now and see whether they have acted as validly and wicked as the outcry which has come to me indicates. And if not, I will know. Sodom really and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. it is when you do the research on Sodom and Gomorrah, mm -hmm. these were very uh, fertile cities. You know, they, they were uh, abundance. Mm -hmm. They had abundance of money and crops. Crops, and everything, everything. That's why Lot was down there himself because he they had, had good grazing yeah. land for his crops. And uh, regardless of what, if you look at uh, Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, they all talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen? Amen? And they say that it was because of their homosexuality. Amen? And also that they wasn't hosp giving hospitality to the poor. No, they wasn't hospitable. Remember, I told them. Amen. So this is why the Lord was going to destroy. Right? They were wickedly and bound. And they what we destroyed. see here in this 18th chapter that uh, Abraham was pleading with the Lord that if you find 50 righteous people in there, we can destroy it. He said, No, I won't destroy it. Right? Think that where he started at 50? Right. Mm -hmm. And then that 50 went all the way down to 10. Right. And what, it, what Abraham was doing, he was persistent, talking to the Lord. Right. You know, so I hate to bother you again, but if you find this many, will you destroy it? Right. I won't destroy it. And you know, um, that makes me, um, when I was meditating on it today, I said there must be somebody praying for all these cities in the United States. Of course there is. And That's around the countries. I don't, I don't know if other countries, I think some countries don't allow this. But I know in the United States they do. Amen? Amen. And where we live at in this city, they do allow it. Right. The city of Cleveland is a lot of Amen. Cleveland. I was driving down the street and they had their flag painted across the street. For pride, oh. right? Uh, my. They, they, they and vote. even they the vote. mayor of our city, his mother and her partner are both women. Bless he was them. raised in that household. Bless them. So this is where this is where the country is headed. Now I'm not here to judge anybody because the Bible says you need to judge yourself. Amen. But I'm just telling you that in all three religions of the world, amen, now there's more religions than the ones I've mentioned, but the ones who believe in one God. And you know he wants us to be under this one. In all the religions, they don't allow this. Mm -hmm. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Now, I was led to tell you this tonight because the scripture says that we're supposed to confess our faults one to another. Amen. 
Now, how does it amplify it? It amplifies it. It says, where are you going? This is uh, James 5th, chapter 16, verse. Because a lot of people are not healed because of the lifestyle they're living in. Right. And also, they are afflicted because of the lifestyle they're living in. We looked at that last week with Manassas because he was doing all the things, you know, when he was king. This is why they actually put hooks in his nose and in his cheek and carried him away. But remember when mm -hmm. I read on that and it said when they, when they fool around like that, something go into them? Right. That, well, that something was, does go into that it. That was in... Uh, now it says here in the 16th verse, the 5th chapter the 16th verse, it says, Therefore confess your sins to one another, your false steps. When you're living that kind of life, that is a false step. Offenses. Your offenses, and it is offensive to some yeah, people. Is. Amen? Now me, let me stop right here. I don't care who comes into our, our church. We're going to love them. Right. Because one thing that I do know about sin, there is none righteous. No, not one. That is written. Amen? There ain't nobody righteous. So can't nobody say one sin is bigger than anybody else's sin. Amen? And what we do over here, we welcome everybody in and we teach them what God says. Amen? Amen? And see, one thing that I have learned in my many years of ministry, that no matter how much you tell somebody about Jesus, they have to choose Jesus for themselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you can't beat somebody over the head with Jesus because what happens to that person, what they do, they get harder and harder. They do. Amen? But just to just say what you were saying about the sickness and sin, it says that in Romans, the first chapter. What verse? That 27 verse. 27 verse? Um, and That's in the book of Romans. Right. Mm -hmm. And it has in there, in the same way also men turn away from natural functions. Other women are... We're consumed with their desire toward one another. Men with men committing shameful acts. And in return, mm -hmm. receiving in their own bodies mm -hmm. the unethical and appropriate penalty for the wrongdoing. So you receive something. Well, yeah, you're going to. See, and we all have to stand comes, before the judgment seat of Christ. Comes there. And we're going to be judged for what we do in this body. Yes, yeah, so a lot of things have come on. You know. And like I was saying, what we do over here, we uh, do not teach condemnation. No. This we is teach way out. about love. Amen. That God loves you. Right. And see, this is what a lot of uh, religious uh, groups, I named off three of them, mm -hmm. uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they don't do. They don't let you know that God so loved the world. That's everybody, and that's right. whatever sin they're in, and whatever situation they're in, that's everybody. Right. The world means everybody. Amen? That's right. Because we know people in the world don't know God. Mm -hmm. And what it says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? Amen? That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. So we teach in love because faith works by love. Right. And then we teach on faith, just like the prayer of faith, amen, amen. will save a person. Right. It will heal a person. Amen? Amen. And then we teach on being led by the Spirit. See, if you don't know that when you are a child of God, that you have received the Spirit of God inside you, and that that is that uh, option that you will keep hearing don't do that. Right. And a lot of times you'll go ahead and do it anyway, and then you'll reap the, the bad results. Mm -hmm. That's actually a spirit inside of you if you are a child of God, because of, as long as you got breath in your lungs and you know you were uh, born again at a, um, um, an early age, 
and then you decided to change your lifestyle like many of us do, right. they call it a backslider. We call it backslider away from God. Coming out of the that Holy Spirit is still in you, and He's every everything you're doing and everywhere you go, no matter what kind of outfit you got on, He's still with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And He's He's wants to lead and guide you into all truth. Amen. And see, this is why we don't uh, omit any of God's word. We don't say, well, if that don't pertain to you, you know, you don't have to do that. No, all. you got to take all of God's word That's right. because it's the word that is going to save you. It's the word that's going to heal you. Amen? That's it's right. the word that's going to deliver you. It ain't no magic potion or something no. or somebody. It's not. The elder laying hands on you and anointing you with oil and praying the prayer of faith that's going to heal you. It's the Lord Amen. that's going to raise you up. Amen. And see, um, this is why we, um, I told you when I started this, we're going to cross all the denominational lines. But if you are really a child of God, that means that you are a son of God. You are born again. You are a new creation. You're supposed to do everything in love. Amen. Amen. Tell the truth. Everything in love. That's what you're supposed to do. And this is what we intend on doing. If whoever comes over here, we don't look at the outer appearance of a person. <laughs> Amen. You know, I mean, because. And, and Pastor, this is why it's so important to have the Holy Spirit, like it says in First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, this uh, eighth verse. It, it says, uh, uh, maybe seven, two. It says, "For God has not called us to impurity, but to mm -hmm. holiness, to be dedicated and set apart by behavior that pleases Him, whether in public or in private, so that whoever rejects and disregards this is not merely." Rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit to you to dwell in you and empower you to overcome temptation. So he gives us the Holy Spirit because he knows we're going to have be tempted with everything. And the Holy Spirit helps us to have the power to not give in to you. Well, here's what it says in verse 17. Mm -hmm. if this goes right along with it. It right. says, Elijah was a man right. with a nature like ours. Right, man. The same physical, mental, mental right. and spiritual limitations and Same shortcomings. Right. And he prayed intensively for it not to rain. That's right. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. That's right. Then he prayed again, and the skies gave rain, and the land produced its crops as usual. Mm -hmm. Do you think that all this sin in this nation has something to do with climate change? Sure it does. That's what it's all about. Here's, let me give you a few verses here. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm just a I'm man. Just saying, Here's what Peter, what when he was down there uh, at, um, when they called for him in the 10th chapter of Acts, oh, they called for Peter. Here's what he said down there um, in the uh, this is Acts 10, 26. Oh, right. Because when uh, he walked into Cornelius' house, this uh, centurion soldier, right. uh, he he bowed down to him. Right, he was honoring him. And Peter, but Peter stood him up saying, Stand up, I myself am a man. So me, myself, am a man. I can right. fall into any of this just right. like anybody else. Amen? That's right. And that's why you've got to be careful when you're out here criticizing people and, yeah. and making fun of them and marking them because you it's a, it's a thin line. Very thin. Amen. You would be right up in there yourself. And even Paul <laughs> would address the one. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Paul told them down there in Athens. Here's what he told them in 14, Acts 14, 17. He says, nevertheless, he has not left himself without witnesses and that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness 
This is what God is good. He is. Now, in 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, the ten, let's go, let's go there. Let's, we got to go pretty soon. Bro. Yeah, almost. You can get all excited. I shouldn't be saying that. I'd be just starting. Let me give you one more verse. Let me give you, here's what it says in Galatians 6, 1. It says, Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, That's right. considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. That's right. That's that right. tells it all right there. It said the this is why I said I'm not judging nobody. I'm just here reading scripture. Right. Amen. I am a representative of God. You just and it's up to truth. you to know the truth. Because right. the truth will make you free. And here's what it says out of Amplified. It says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, right. you who are spiritual, that is, you who are responsive to the guidance of the Spirit, That's right, tell are to restore such a person in a spirit of meekness, yeah. not with a sense of so superiority right. or self-righteousness, right. Keeping a watchful eye on yourself right. so that you are not tempted as well. And that's what you got to do. This is what, for you, you know, know, you're just running. Them. That's why I just smile when I see all this going on. Right. But here's what we got to look at. I'll be saying, I'm glad I'm not in. There are Boy, I'm famines and plagues. Here's what it says in. My time is up. <laughs> uh, we'll pick this up uh, next week, but I'm just giving something here to meditate on. Go with me to Matthew, the 24th chapter. I just want to read a few verses here because they asked Jesus, how will they know when he's coming back and what will be the end of the time and what's all of that when all that is going on? Amen. And what Jesus told them He said, uh, this, this, because this sounds so much like what's going on today in the time period we live in. It says in Matthew uh, 24, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. No man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. Right. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Right. See that you be not troubled. Right. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. So that's why I'm just here teaching you the word of God because I'm born by what Jesus said. Now, if anybody knows what's it going on, right. it's Jesus because right. he is the first and the last. He's the Omega and, you know, Alpha and Omega and all of that. He's Lord and Lord and King of Kings. And he is my Savior. And it says, For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines. Famines. Right. Do we have famines on this earth right yeah, now? They're trying to get yeah. this grain out of Ukraine right now because they're, they're so scared that they're going to be hungry. And it says pestilence. That means coronavirus is a pestilence. That's it's going on. Earthquake. And earthquakes. I just looked at uh, Yellowstone Park. was Bridges and roads are washing away. Oh, in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. Yeah. All these are just the beginning of sorrow. I'm going to leave you with that. But here's what he said in the 14th verse. Said, Jump down to the 14th verse. He said, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then should the end come. The gospel has made it to all nations. Yeah, it has it. So they might as well stop being scared. And so, you know, um, the best it's way to, work. to stay on God's side, regardless of what's God. happening, you need to stay on God's side. The best way to stay on His side is to walk in love. That's right. If you walk in love, you won't get up every morning and, and, and be selfish. And it don't take it nothing to be selfish. All you have to do is wake up that morning and you can be selfish and get your way. Right. But he, but he says, walk in love. That's right. 
Amen. Help somebody. And it, you know, pride and selfishness won't let you walk in love. No. It, it won't do it. it is that evil and it says, um, it get inside of live by faith. That's right. The just shall live by faith. You walk by faith, not by sight. That's right. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Right. Without faith, it is impossible to please God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's what Paul was telling them down in Ephesus is that have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? But they was acting too wicked and vowed. Well, they, they probably was life. acting like people we see running around the street today. Well, they was. Y'all have a good day.